The threshold linear networks that we have set up give a really great model for seeing lots of different interesting dynamical behaviors. Let's explore. Let's just take a look, have some fun. Recall the model that we have a collection of activity levels, x, x1 up through xn, and their derivative with respect to time is minus x, so it's dissipative, plus the term wx plus theta, where wx is the connectivity, theta is this activation energy, and we're thresholding it. We're just taking the positive part or the non-negative part of wx plus theta. Now we've looked at what happens when that matrix W that tells you how neurons influence their neighbors when that is weakly inhibitory or strongly inhibitory. That is on one or the other side of negative one. Now, there's an interesting case. If we fix a particular directed graph on this collection of neurons, one through n, then what we're going to do is whenever there's an edge from i to j, that is going to imply a weak inhibition, a weakly inhibitory dynamics. But if there's not an edge from i to j, then that is going to imply strongly inhibitory connection. So we're going to mix it up a little bit and see what happens. So let's say we've got a graph on, I don't know, five neurons, and it is a directed graph or a die graph. You have arrows on the edges, and that is what controls the dynamics. We're going to set wij equal to negative one plus some epsilon if there's a directed arrow from j to i, but we're going to set it to negative one minus epsilon if there's not a directed arrow from j to i. Now, we don't want that epsilon to be too big. Let's keep it uh, definitely less than one. And if we wanted to, we could, you know, we could use a different epsilon for the addition versus the subtraction, whatever. Let's keep it simple, and let's just consider what can happen as a function of the network connectivity. This is kind of an interesting problem in graph topology and how it influences the dynamics. Okay, so here's a result from that preprint that I mentioned. Theorem, if this directed graph has no sinks, and by sink, I mean a vertex where all of the arrows point into it and nothing points out. Then the system has bounded orbits. You don't fly off to infinity, but there are no stable equilibria. Hmm, that's very interesting. What can happen? If this were a two-dimensional system, Poincaré Bendixson would tell us that you've got to have a limit cycle in there, but these are not two-dimensional systems. So maybe we get something else besides limit cycles. So here's a graph with five neurons and arrows that are telling you about weak connectivity. Notice that there are no sinks in this directed graph, and that if we look at the outputs of the various xi's, we see that the system very quickly stabilizes to a limit cycle, a periodic orbit, where the neurons are doing interesting things, but they're repeating over and over. They settle into that periodic orbit. Now that's really cool, but what happens if we take that same graph and just wire it up differently? What we'll see in this case, depending on the structure of this digraph, is maybe we have a sink where things quickly go to some stable equilibrium, or in cases where we don't have sinks, we seem to see just limit cycles, but these limit cycles express different patterns. And it's really cool to contemplate how the structure of this graph of interaction between neurons regulates the pattern of the limit cycle that you see. And if you read that preprint carefully, you'll find that they have some results that tell you some things about this. That is really cool. Very nice problem connecting the graph theory to the dynamics. But what we're seeing here is just two types of dynamical phenomena. We see stable equilibria and we see periodic orbits or stable limit cycles more particularly. That is not the only thing that can happen in this case. 
Consider the following. This is a system with seven neurons. They're connected together. They're wired up in some way. I'm not going to draw those arrows in because it gets a little busy. What we see is that from these initial conditions, things start to evolve. The neurons go up and down in activity level, and sometimes they're quiet for a while, and then they get a little bump to them. But what we see is that things are not settling down into a stable pattern. It looks as though they're going to. It looks as though each individual neuron sort of has some internal period that it is following, but the collection of them never settle down. What we're getting is something that we've seen hints of before, namely chaotic dynamical systems. And that is something that definitely appears in this model. It's definitely really interesting. One of the coolest aspects of it is that such a simple model can lead to such complex behavior. Now, the story is even a bit more complicated than this, because if we take this same system and change the initial conditions just a little bit, then what we get is not a solution that is very close to what we started with. In fact, I've changed the initial conditions on this system just a tiny bit, and what's happening is that everything is going to a stable equilibrium. We just happened to start at a place where you avoid falling into that sink and you wind up swirling around in a chaotic manner. That is so cool. That's so interesting. There is so much more to this simple system. And you have learned enough to be able to go to that preprint, read it, find out some of the things that they know, find out some of the things that maybe they haven't figured out yet and see what you can do. Have fun.